there's, there's three muscles that pull us forward. Pretty, pretty much, it's, it's abs, psoas, major, and psoas minor. Only 50% of people have got a psoas minor. Psoas minor doesn't go down under the inguinal ligament and hook on to the, to the, uh, greater, uh, the, the lesser, lesser trochanter. It hooks onto the pubic bone. So if, if someone's got muscle spasming, maybe it's a psoas minor on 50% of people. It's psoas major or iliacus, okay? But the ones that pull us forward are the psoas major, psoas minor, if we've got one, and the, and the six-pack. There's probably a bit of oblique stuff going on there too, but, but for the sake of the exercise, that's the one that'll do it. So where someone's been doing a lot of shoveling, again, they're doing this, sort of action using a crowbar and these are all presentations that you can ask people so you'll know what caused it because people say why did I do it I mean wh why is it doing it you know wh what's going on why, why am I sick why am I crook and you'll say you doing a lot of shoveling over the weekend they go uh, yeah mowing the lawn mm -hmm. mow on the lawn if you've got one of those push mowers instead of a motorized one but other ones will do it if you're going up a hill well, it does it for me I, when I mow the lawn I normally book in <laughs> there you go. Okay. The other thing is uh, people who do painting. When, when they're doing painting, like painting a ceiling or, or something above them, they're doing that. They're trying to stabilise their hips and move their torso forward. Okay. It's not that the whole body moves like so. That's inefficient movement, so they're doing that. And that's a psoas killer. So crowbars, shoveling, vacuum cleaning... Climbing stairs, people who go on holidays, climbing stairs in castles. Yeah, yeah I had a guy who did that. I told him he'd been to Germany climbing stairs in a castle. He said, how on earth do you know that? I said, well, I know that all stairs go up like that. Your right leg's sore than your left. You were going up a castle stairs. And he said, bloody hell, lad, you're right. He was another Norman. <laughs> I get called lad a lot. Anyway, okay, let's, let's check the iliacus. Okay, so we've got two, one touchy bit there going in here. I'll show you on the other side in a moment. The eyes have it. Yep. Okay, now normally I'd be round the other side, but because of the audience, I won't. I have my fingers are over there. I'd be palpating the same as I did on this side. I'd move around the patient, but for the sake of the camera and for people who are on this side, I'm palpating the same way. There's a wee bit down there. That's unusual for it to be down there. Normally, iliacus tightness is up the top. So that's, that's a relatively clear picture. Now, sometimes, if there's a, uh, a tightness of the ligaments that go between L5 and S1, and these are the ones that will jam the sciatic nerve because the sciatic nerve comes from in between the vertebrae, between L4 and L, uh, sorry, sometimes L3, L4, L4, L5, S1 and S2. That's where the, uh, the sciatic nerves exit. Now, why people get sciatic pain is because the sciatic nerves exit at the back of the abdo. Not on the back of the back. They come out at the back of the abdo anteriorly and run down the spine, going around the back of the pelvis and out the hole in the back of the bum, the obturator foramen, and that's where the sciatic nerve exits to go down the leg. So if someone comes in with sciatica, sure they've got pain here, they've got pain down the back of the leg, the first thing you think of is up here. Check the, psoas, check the psoas muscles to see if there's any tightness up there. If there's none in the psoas, quite often if you palpate around it's, it would be, say, REN6, CV6, palpate centrally, and you will feel the gap between L5 and S1, and watch the person's face. Yeah, see the grimace on the right? Not so much the left, yeah? Which side, which, and it was the left, okay? So she's got a little bit of ligament tightness between L5 and S1, and I'll check now S2. I've got to push down fairly firmly. And sometimes people will go, oh, ah, I say, you're busting for a wee, and they go, yeah. <laughs> so it's a bit difficult, even though the bladder's sort of fairly well down there. Sometimes in women there's a bit of uterus stuff going on, 
So it may be just sort of uh, like coming up towards a period, the uterus has got a little more blood in it than normal. That may give you a false reading. So sometimes it pays to ask in, in your consult when you're working with somebody where they are in their cycle, just in case. And sometimes a swollen uterus will press on the psoas. Now, I didn't tell you this, but the sciatic nerve usually passes through the, the, um, the psoas muscle. The sciatic nerve usually often passes through the psoas muscle. So if the psoas muscle is spasmed, that's why people have got sciatica. So the first thing to look, fix and check with a sciatic type person is what's going on with their psoas. Loosen the psoas and nine tenths of the time the sciatica will go away. If it's not, because the sciatic nerve exits through here, down there, out through the obturator foramen, the first thing it will go through is the piriformis muscle, which goes from the inside, I'll have to show you on the board, but visualise, here's a pelvis, and I haven't got old rastus over there, but um, the, the, the piriformis muscle goes from the tip of the hip across, this is where gallbladder 30 is, in the in the middle of this in the middle of the uh, piriformis muscle. So what you're doing when you when you needling gallbladder 30 is you're loosening the whole piriformis muscle. What the piriformis does, I don't know if you can see me, you remember Charlie Chaplin? He used to contract his piriformis muscles. They're Charlie Chaplin's muscles. So if you remember that, you'll know what they do. They pull, they laterally rotate the leg, like so. That's what it does. Now, if the piriformis muscle is in spasm, and in 40 or 50% of the cases, uh, of cases, maybe 30%, the sciatic nerve will actually go through the piriformis muscle. Sometimes it exits underneath it, and occasionally it goes above it, as in superficially. Sometimes it's through it, and sometimes it's underneath it. So, if there's a sciatic nerve problem or sciatic pain down here, the first port of call is think from the top down, think from here. If there's nothing happening here and someone's still got, eh, well, then, you know, it's, I've, there's a little bit of tightness here, I've sort of loosened that up, pinned it a few times, loosened it up. But there's nothing major showing up in the same treatment before you got too carried away. You'd be, you'd be checking the piriformis because that can be... That can be a cause, but usually, nine-tenths of the time, it's up here. So, let's just check and see if there's anything else happening here. A little wee bit there. All these get pinned. Okay, getting down probably around about S3, which is getting pretty much out of things. Okay. I don't usually find any problems beyond that. So, we know we've got a little bit of tightness here in the groins, those ones, because Anna's a little bit tight, she can only sort of bend forward, maybe fingers down to stomach 37, it could be her back, which we haven't checked yet, or it could be hammies or glutes, but she's told us that she feels a little bit of tightness in the hammies, and she's told us that she's got tightness in the glutes. Yeah, and so, tightness, around the, tightness around the back, I suppose I would probably say back's probably the tightest. When you say back, do you mean... Uh, yeah down there, sort of yeah, base. Yeah. Okay, so we're looking at glutes and maybe L5S1 on the back. Mm. Okay, let's check hammies and see what your leg lift. On that one. I will, what I will do is I will, I will support your leg and lift it gently, straight leg. Yeah. I will take it up to when you feel discomfort and then I will lower it, I will not drop it. Yeah. Okay, so let me lift, I don't want to help. It's important that you lift it and the patient doesn't. You tell me when it starts to hurt anyway or anywhere or become discomforted. In your back, because sometimes people will get it in the back, sometimes at the back of the leg. If you can get it up to 90 degrees, the person's doing pretty well. You can, okay. That's pretty good. Always lower the leg gently, always be in command on this one. Never ever drop a leg. Why did you do that, please? Because I thought you were coming to this one, and I'm protecting me. Okay, thanks. I thought it might be because you had no, a, no, no. a muscle spasm muscle. up here. Okay, so, thanks. Okay, this leg goes, uh, let me do it. Thanks. Appreciate you helping. 
Now, this one's starting, to, starting it, it's gone up fairly freely. But some people are very, very touchy about lifting the leg up, and they're the people with usually tight hammies. But Anna's pretty good in that area. Okay, so in Anna's case, I wouldn't be going into bat too much on hamstrings. I'll find somebody else who's got tight hammies, and I'll show you how to loosen them. But what we're going to do now is some needlework here. Are you okay with me pinning you? Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 tell me. What, you, you have a, a, a problem with being pinned? No, I'm here you do what you have to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just coward. Well, after this you'll be a qualified coward. <laughs> okay, could somebody, somebody um, could you grab my little blue bag up there with some pins in it, please? With this, no. no. I've worked over the years. I've tried all sorts of stretches. I've tried drop leg stretches. Thanks. Over the edge of the couch. Um, seeing if I can put this sort of resistance sort of stuff, contract the opposite muscle against resistance and all that sort of stuff. And it was a failure. Everything failed and I couldn't work it out until I started palpating and pinning. Because I knew that, that, say, the psoas was tight and I did... Um, I did, you know, I did all the supposedly gung ho stuff, which didn't work for me. I know for other practitioners it may work. There's there's all sorts of nifty sort of cross fibre massages that I've had done to myself, which worked, but I didn't know about them then. So I developed this, which works for me, and it will work for you. I don't need a rubbish bin just to put all these. So, this is just light. This is what I do in clinic. The iliacus is, is quite important that you don't forget it. And it's, like I say, it's usually the, the top 50 mil or so around the top of the... Of the um, you, you want to come around here so you can see? Now, this area here, across the inguinal ligament... If these hurt, you tell me. If any one of these hurts, you tell me and I'll move it, okay? Because sometimes when you pin, you find that you hit small blood vessels, very tiny ones, like mm -hmm. tiny capillaries, and they've got heaps of nerves around them, so they really hurt like hell. Or you hit a nerve end. And so what I...